Bwana asifiwe. Praise God. God is good. And all the time, even when it's very hot outside, he's still a good God. Eh? But I, I pray and I believe you are praying for the rains. Uh, we are in April already, so the farmers especially are crying out for the rains. The, some of the crops are down. They've done their sowing, so just trust in God. And I know that our God is faithful, isn't he? So he'll give us abundance. One of the prayers this year I am passionate about is food sufficiency. Abia Jiraniako, food sufficiency. Yeah, because we have a tropic country, beautiful land and soils, people who work hard. So I believe in my lifetime we will see more than enough food produced in Kenya so that we can even feed our neighbors. Just for statistics, 2018, we bought food from outside worth about 200 billion Kenya shillings, over 18 million metric tons we bought from outside. So imagine we change that math, and they're buying from us. A good story, isn't it? Tell your neighbor it starts at prayer. Uh, so, acha tu amini mungu, and maybe in ya, kama naishi kwa flat, wanze kupanda sikuma wiki, kwa ndirisha, you position yourself to be part of a production chain rather than uh, uh, the consumer. And God will bless you. Um, we are doing curtain raising, so we are leading one scripture, and then we are praying, and we are welcoming uh, the senior pastor, the man of God. First Kings chapter 18. You know this story. This is the story of Elijah and King Ahab. So Elijah prayed. James chapter 5, the scriptures say, Elijah prayed, and there was no rain. Can you imagine the effective, the scriptures say, the effective prayer, the prayer of a righteous man has much effect, James 5, 16. So he prayed, there was no, no rain for three and a half years. Not for month, for three and a half years. Then the scriptures say, he prayed again. And there was what? There was rain. It was a very dramatic prayer uh, in First Kings chapter 18. I'll just speak one of the scriptures. So why there was no rain is because there was sin in the land. There were about 450 false prophets. And they were in the king's court. So there was sin in the land. And God was hindered in ministering. So he punished these people and then there was a sacrifice, and this, the false prophets were killed. And when the false prophets were killed, Elijah, let me read it, First Kings 18 from verse 40. Then Elijah commanded the men, says the prophets of Baal, don't let anyone get away. They seized them, and Elijah had them brought down to the Kishon Valley and slaughtered there. 850 prophets. Verse 41, and Elijah said to Ahab, Go, eat, and drink, for there is a sound of heavy rain. Hallelujah. Let me just read that again. Go, eat, and drink, for there is what? The sound of much rain. Just speak it to your neighbor. It's a powerful scripture. Go, eat, and drink, for there is the sound of... That's my prayer for you tonight, that there be the sound of much rain in your lives, the sound of healing, the sound of finances, the opening of many doors. May there be not little rain, but much rain in your lives. Let's pray. Father, we thank you because you are in control of a drought season and you are in control of much rain. And as Parklands Baptist Church, by faith, we take this position that there is the sound of of much rain in our lives. I don't know in which area your life has been in drought. Maybe some sickness, maybe relationship, maybe finances. Whatever it is that has been in drought in your season might have lasted months, years, three and a half years, 
But now there's a new wave in the spirit. There's a new movement which is triggered by faith. And we are saying there is the sound of much rain. Therefore, go eat and drink. Father, break every barrier that is holding back the rains of God, the showers of God, the blessings of God. Let your people experience the sound of much rain. We thank you because you are the God of the elements and you are the God of every situation. And our lives are safe in you. No matter how hard, no matter how difficult things have been, you turn the seasons. You turn the seasons because you are in charge of every season. May there now be an outpouring of your spirit and the sound of much rain in our lives. And we thank you for hearing us because we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And God's people said, now help me put together your hands as we welcome the one and only <laughs> Senior Pastor Ambrose Nyangao. Let's appreciate Pastor Oshira. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor you're looking good. Better than yesterday. And tomorrow. You will shine. In Jesus' name. Meta, meta. Sparkle, sparkle. Shiny, 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 shiny. Wear shades. <laughs> Even at night. Eh? <laughs> yes. This is a good day. This is a good evening. Thanks for coming to the service today. You're special. Give your neighbor a high five and tell them you're special. Amen. I didn't tell you to slap them. I just said you give them a high five. <laughs> The Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me. And you know, the reason why I was glad to go into the house of the Lord, because in the house of the Lord is the word of God. Amen? It's the word of God. Let me read you a very interesting psalm, uh, which sometimes you don't usually read. Psalms 73, uh, especially just to remind us the importance of coming into God's house. And sometimes this psalm can be, can, um, can verbalize some of the things you say uh, in your mind. Um, but listen to what he said. Uh, NIV, I just put it in NIV. Um, King Jimmy is a good one. Okay. It's a, saf, a psalm of Asaf, okay, Asaf. is one of the singers. It says, surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. And then he says, it begins to share his doubts and some of the challenges that were ahead in his mind. It says, but as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold. For I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Then this is how he starts saying. He says, they have no struggles. Now who are these? It's the wicked. People who don't believe in God. People who don't, who don't tend to come to church. He says, they have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They are free from common human burdens. They are not plagued by human ills. Therefore, pride is their necklace. They clothe themselves with violence. From their callous hearts comes iniquity. Their evil imaginations have no limits. They scoff and speak with malice, with arrogance. They threaten oppression. Their mouths claim, their mouths lay claim to heaven. And their tongues take possession of the earth. Therefore, their people turn to them and drink up waters in abundance. They say, how would God know? Does the Most High know anything? 
This is what the wicked are like, always free of care. They go on amassing wealth. Surely, now this is not what he says, surely in vain I have kept my heart pure and have washed my hands in innocence. All day long I have been afflicted and every morning brings new punishments. If I had spoken out like that, I would have betrayed your children. When I tried to understand all this, it troubled me deeply until I did something. What did I do? Until I entered the sanctuary of God. It is there I understood. Just go back. It is there I then understood their final destiny. He goes on to say, surely you place them on a slippery ground. You cast them down to ruin. How suddenly they are destroyed, completely swept away by terrors. They are like a dream when one awakes. When you arise, Lord, you will despise them as fantasies. When my heart was grieved and my spirit embittered, I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you. Yet I'm always with you. You hold me by your right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterwards, you will take me where? Into glory. And so, and then it goes on to talk about other things. Whom have I in heaven? But you, and earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion once a week. How long? Forever. Those who are far from you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful to you. So th this is a very interesting psalm. Let me just finish there. But that is why it is important to come into the house of the Lord. Because when you come, your mind is reset. Tell your neighbor, our minds are going to be reset. You know, you're able to see things from God's perspective. And so, in this new month, the month of April, just tell your neighbor, we are actually in the month of April. Uh, tell them, please, you're not in March. Tell them we have Vukad. Vukad is a Hebrew word that means we have crossed over. Hallelujah. And so in this month, last month we were talking about overcoming faith. And this month we want to introduce uh, the new sub theme. And what is it? What's the new one? Huh? It's administering faith. Tell your neighbor, administering faith. One more time, tell them. Another time, tell them. One more time. Under that title is another title, Dispensing Justice. All right? Dispensing Justice. Administering faith, dispensing justice. In this meeting today, we're going to talk about administering faith. Administering faith. Now, let me read these verses. Hebrews chapter 11. We have read these verses before. We'll keep reading them again and again from verse 30 to 40. And I want you to note what it just says as we go. It says, by faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. Now, how does faith come? Hearing what? The word of God. So, you can say it this way. By the word of God and believing in the word of God, faith resulting from it and applying and actioning that word, the walls of Jericho fell. 
Are you nitaring that one? So is, there's, there's no faith where you are, you're, you're psyching yourself. Okay, the walls are going to come. The walls are going to come down. Walls, walls, there, here they go, here they go, here they go, here they go. Boom, boom. No, that's not what you're doing. There's a word God gives to you. You believe it. You, act, you activate it or action it. And your situation responds to the word of God. And things begin to happen. So, tell your neighbor, faith is connected to the word of God. So, here we go. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell. After the army had done something, what did they do? They marched around for seven days. Okay, let me keep reading verse 31. Goes on to say, By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon. Can you see the verses? I'm reading the verses. Can you see them? Okay, I'm the only one who is seeing the words on the screen. <laughs> okay, so let me read. Let's start with verse 30. Because I want you to read those verses. All right, verse 30. By faith, the walls of Jericho did what? Fell. After the army had done something, what did they do? For seven days. Okay, verse 31. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell you about Gideon. So these are people who connected faith and things happened. Gideon. Then there was Barak. Samson, Jephthah, about David, and Samuel, and the prophets. Verse 33, who through faith, through faith, through faith, conquered kingdoms. Now, that is overcoming faith. That's what happened in the month of March. This month, they administered justice. Hallelujah. So we are picking it from there. They administered justice. They gained what was promised. May you in this month of April gain what God promised you. May you gain what God promised you. Who shut the mouths of lions, verse 34, quenched the fury of the flames and escaped the edge of the sword whose weakness was turned to strength. May your weakness be turned to strength. Amen. Who became powerful in battle. May you become powerful in battle. May the battles you handle this month, may you be powerful. Amen. They routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to, to, be, to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. I want to talk about administering faith. Tell your neighbor, administering faith. Now, that word ad to administer, it has a number of what in English we call them synonyms. Now, tell your neighbor synonyms. In fact, ask your neighbor what the synonyms means. Ask, ask if, they, if they did English in school. Synonyms. I'm not talking about all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I'm talking about synonyms. What did they say? What are synonyms? Somebody is laughing. Somebody is cracking you up. What's the opposite of a synonym? Okay. The, the other, the anti, it's the other way around. Synonym and, and, and names that mean the same as the one you're talking about. Hallelujah. So, the word administer can mean to manage. That's a synonym, manage. So, if you're managing something, you're doing what? You're administering something. 
That's why we get the word administrator. Is that better? An administrator does what? Manages. So to administer is to manage. That's one name. Direct. Okay? They direct. They do things. They control. They operate. If you're operating something, you're administering something, they regulate. They conduct. Hello? Another word is they dispense. They apply. They deliver. They distribute. They provide. So, when I'm saying administering faith, we are basically saying God has given you a faith that makes things happen. So, let me say that again. Faith is given to you to make things happen. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you are an administrator. And your faith will help you. Many times people have faith, but they don't allow that faith to make things happen. So this month, we are going to use faith to administer, to manage, to operate, to apply various things in life, especially the word of God. The verse that Pastor Washira read about Elijah, Elijah spoke a word and he said, I hear the sound of rain. Now, what, what, what was he doing? He was administering faith. He had faith that administers. So let me say it the other way around. He had faith that administers because God has given each one of us faith. So look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, do you, do you believe you have faith? Now, because you have faith, ability from God, use it to administer the will and the purpose of God. So, Elijah said something, I hear the abundance of, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And he told the king, start running because before you reach home, this rain is going to catch up with you. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, start walking with umbrellas. Thank you, Jesus. Now, you may look very foolish walking around with big umbrellas in town. If you have those small ones that you can hide, hallelujah. You just, just be walking around with an umbrella. Because something is about to happen. Uh, by the way, are you expecting it to rain? I know for some of you, it is basically because you want to sleep with your blankets on top of you. Hello. Because <laughs> right now, some people have thrown their blankets somewhere. It's like we are in Mombasa. Uh, and so you just want some comfort. Now, the farmers don't want rain for that purpose. They, they want rain for what? For the crops. And I'm telling you, be, start thank, continue thanking God for the warm season. Hallelujah. Because when the rain comes, um, you're, you're going to start saying, oh, there's too, there's too much mud, you cannot cross the road. Thank God we are creating and putting together the drainage system because uh, we don't want to be building boats uh, when the rain comes. Hallelujah. In other words, your faith anticipates God's word to be fulfilled and things begin to happen. And so, five things I want to share this evening very briefly to help us to see how our faith administers things. Because faith, your faith must do things. And so I want to say number one, your faith applies it does something. Your faith must apply something. Your faith applies, and I'll be finishing those sentences in a moment. Your faith applies. Your faith operates. Your faith provides. Your faith delivers. Your faith distributes. In other words, faith that administers applies something. Faith that operates Faith that administers operates something. 
Faith that administers provides something. Faith that administers delivers something. And faith that administers distributes something. So let me start with the first one. Faith applies. Now, just so that you get a picture. Um, what picture can I give? You know, when you, when you go to the doctor and uh, you say you have a wound, and so they, they clean the wound, and then they administer something. What do they administer? Huh? You've never had wounds. What, what do they administer? Huh? Just tell your neighbor, dawa. Okay. <laughs> so they administer dawa. In other words, they apply something on the wound. Faith applies something. And this faith that administers applies something that is very important. And that is why it is important for you to understand when your faith administers, what is this medicine it is administering? What is this ingredient that it is putting into our situations and into life? So, I want to say this. Faith applies the kingdom of God. And I want to read this verse, Matthew 6, verse 10. And Jesus Christ is speaking, and he says, in fact, take it to verse 9. Let me start with verse 9. It says, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And then he says, your kingdom come. He's saying, if the situations of life are going to change, if the wounds of life are going to be healed, God has given us an ingredient that can sort these things out. That ingredient is what? I've just told you. That ingredient is what? No, faith is administering. But what is it administering? The kingdom of God. It is applying the kingdom of God. That is why when we pray, we don't just pray and say, oh God, I'm going through a situation. Oh God, you better do something about it. Oh God, you know things are just getting rough. In fact, God, I'm feeling choked. And God, you better sort me out because if I choke, you're the one who is going to blame. Jehovah God. <laughs> no, you're not doing that. You are reaching a stage and saying, okay, I've given you the problem. I've shared the problem. Now I want to apply to the problem, a solution. That solution is what? The kingdom of God. I pray that you catch that because that is the key part I want to talk about. That no matter what situation you face, the first thing you must remember is to say, thy kingdom come. Because when God's kingdom comes, no matter what situation you face, you begin to have the solution to that situation. So Jesus said, the first thing you need to pray after you said our, our Father who art in heaven, he says, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, you apply the kingdom of God. By the way, Somebody says, what is the kingdom? So let me give you this verse, Romans 14, 17. And you say, what is this kingdom you're talking about? But this is a verse you know, and it says this. Romans 14, 17. Romans 14, 17. It's a good verse for you to remember. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. In the book of Acts, chapter 3, Peter and John faced a situation that needed a solution. 
And so the Bible says this, if I can read those verses, Acts 3, verse 1. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer, at 3 in the afternoon, just like the way we have come for prayer today. Now, then they share the problem. Now, a man was lame from birth, was being carried to the temple gate, called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. Now, those are people of faith. Hallelujah. They said, look at us. Next verse, verse 5. So the man gave his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, I know you're expecting some money. But he said, and I like the way he said it. Peter said, silver or gold? Who doesn't have? So who was he speaking on behalf of? Himself. Because John might actually have had <laughs> silver and gold. So he didn't say, we don't have. Because he didn't know what John is carrying. He said, silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have, I give you. What do you think he had? Not faith. He had the kingdom of God. And he was going to use faith to administer or apply the kingdom of God. I hope, I hope this lesson will come through. You have faith. What are you administering? What are you applying? You're applying the kingdom of God. And he had this, 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 this ability or this belief that if he applies the kingdom, the kingdom will do what the kingdom always does. So let me read that verse again, verse 6. Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Now, why did he say that? You see, he was saying, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is being done in heaven. In other words, in heaven, there is no lame person. In heaven, there is no poor person. In heaven, there is no person who is stuck. You know how you can walk in life and say, I'm stuck. You know me, these days I'm stuck. These days everything has stalled. Let me tell you this. In heaven, nothing has been stuck. Nothing is stalled. So what you're saying, heaven, come to my situation. Heaven, enter my problem. Because heaven has the solutions of earth's problems. Let me say that again. Heaven has the solution of earth's problems. Uh, you didn't hear me. I'm saying heaven has the solution of earth's problems. I said heaven has the solution of earth's problems. For example, if you came here and you said, Pastor Ambrose, please pray for me because tomorrow... They are auctioneers. I have received the auctioneers' notice that tomorrow they are carrying my things. Now, what do you expect me to do? Ah, talk to me. What do you expect me to do? Hmm? You expect me to do what? To go look for those auctioneers. Because if I go looking for those auctioneers... I may be part of... <laughs> the property that is being auctioned. Let me tell you this. I will tell you that problem, heaven has a solution. 
and I will connect the kingdom of God. And I will say, kingdom of God, come into this situation. And in heaven, where no property is taken away from people, thank you, Jesus, heaven will come your way. And that night, the night before the day, God will send his angels to the auctioneers and make them busy for a two months before they show up at your place. Thank you, Jesus. And in those two months, God will have provided for you what you need to pay. By the time they show up, that situation will be sorted. Applying the kingdom of God. You know, God is bigger than your situation. You don't have to die under that burden. So Jesus, Peter says to this man, silver and gold I don't have. What I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, walk. Because in heaven, people walk. He takes the guy by the hand, and before the guy knows what is happening, his feet are strengthened, he jumps up, and the Bible says, singing, praising, and jumping, he runs into the temple and causes very serious commotion. Especially if you're a guy who has not walked for 40 years. You will cause a commotion. You will not walk into church quietly. How are you? I'm happy to meet you. I have not walked for 40 years. Thank you. Uh, you, you have been walking for how many years? Me, I have never walked. No, you will cause commotion. I pray that in April, God will give you a miracle that will make you cause a commotion. Yeah. Will make you cause commotion. In Jesus' name. The kingdom of God will show up because your faith will administer the kingdom of God. That guy's life was changed. But the kingdom of darkness was so upset that Peter and John were taken into the, among the judges and beaten up and they were told, don't ever preach in this name again. And they said, you think we are stopping? We will administer this kingdom wherever we go. I pray that tonight you will begin to have faith to administer the kingdom of God in your situation and in your circumstances. Hallelujah. That financial situation has already been sorted by Jehovah God. Somebody just missed that. I'm saying that financial situation has just been sorted by the living God. Faith that applies the kingdom of God. But let me go to number two. Number two, faith operates. What does faith operate? What is this thing that faith is operating? It is operating what? The keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom. So let me read these verses in Matthew 16. Very interesting story, again about Peter. The Bible says this. Let me read from verse 10, and then I'll pick it from there as we go. Um, okay, but let's go to 15, verse 15. Okay, so Jesus is asking the disciples, who do people say that I am? Then here he says, but what about you? He asked, who do you say? I am. Now look at verse 17. Verse 17, Simon, okay, go back, 16, sorry. Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood. That means no human being gave you this information. But by my father, where? In heaven. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is being done in heaven. Let me ask you, do you need a heavenly idea to drop in your mind today? You see, heaven is full of ideas. Creative. 
amazing ideas. As I'm talking, may those ideas drop in your system. May they drop in your system in Jesus' name. So he's telling Peter, go back to verse 17. Uh, Jesus replied, Blessed are you, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you what? The keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now, note, it is not saying, I'll give you the keys into the kingdom. He says, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. The key into the kingdom is Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. You know, that's why some people say, when people go to, they die and go to heaven, who do they find at the door? They find who? Peter. And Peter is checking them out in the register. What's your name? I'm so and so. So Peter allows you into heaven. Uh-uh. Peter does not have keys into the kingdom. Peter has keys of the kingdom. And Jesus is saying, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Let me read this in the Amplified Version so that you can understand it a bit better. Verse 19. I will give you the keys, which actually means what? Authority. I will give you the keys or authority of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind, forbid, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth, will have already been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose, permit, declare lawful on earth, will have already been loosed in heaven. In other words, he's saying the keys of the kingdom is the authority to be able to administer kingdom to this planet Earth. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor you have authority. Let me read another verse for you. Luke, uh, Luke chapter, uh, chapter 10. Let me read Luke chapter 10. Starting with verse 17. Luke 10, 17. The Bible says this. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. He said to them, I watched Satan do what? Listen to me. Satan is falling. In your situation, Satan is falling. He's not rising. You know, sometimes you can say this like you say it in Swahili. Squeezy. Shetana menikalia. Hello? Why have you allowed him to sit on you? You have authority because Satan is doing what? Falling. He said, I watched. Jesus is saying this. He's giving you confidence. He's saying, I watched Satan fall from heaven. Like what? A flash of lightning. Then look at verse 19. He says this, I have given you authority to do what? To trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Let me give you an example. A guy, the, Paul was an amazing guy. He knew how to administer faith and the kingdom. The last book, what is the last chapter of the book of Acts? It's chapter what? Twenty-eight. So let's let's read chapter twenty-eight, book of Acts. Chapter twenty-eight, it says this. Acts. I'm only twenty-seven. Ah, okay. Listen to this story. And see Paul. And his confidence. Once safely on shore, we found out that the island was called Malta. The islanders showed us unusual kindness. 
They built a fire and welcomed us, all because it was raining and cold. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood, and as he put it on the fire, a viper, driven out by the heat, fastened itself on his hand. When the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, now, forget what, you are, what we are reading. If it was me, I would not be standing there, the snake is hanging on my hand. I will be jumping trees and fences as I take off. But Paul, in his confidence, he is not running. The snake is doing what? He is hanging. When the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, this man <laughs> must be a murderer. For though he escaped from the sea, the goddess, justice, has not allowed him to live. But Paul, tell your neighbor, but Paul, shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. Look at this next verse. The people expected him to swell. By the way, did Paul expect himself to swell? No. But the people did. The people expected him to swell up or suddenly fall dead. But after waiting a long time, by the way, what is a long time? I mean, they waited until Iosiku, until the next day. They waited for a long time. But seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and said, he was a god. Tell your neighbor, God has given you authority. Tell your neighbor, you will not die. Tell your neighbor, this situation will not kill you. Yes, you have been beaten by a snake. Tell them. But guess what? You will not die. You have God's power inside you. God's authority is yours. You have the keys of the kingdom. Not only will you survive, you will thrive to the glory of God. Somebody better give God a big hand. In Jesus' name. Tell your neighbor, authority. One more verse. Let me give you this verse. In the book of Matthew 28, around verse 18, Jesus is speaking, and Jesus says this to the disciples. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, with this authority, go and make disciples of all nations. Ladies and gentlemen, you have the keys of the kingdom. I'm saying you have the keys of the kingdom. And when somebody gives you keys, use the keys. Amen? In your prayer life, use the keys. At work, use the keys. Authority. And sometimes you don't have to shout. People with authority don't shout. Hello? They just decree, declare, and they authorize and things happen. Hallelujah. Things happen. Keys of the kingdom. So, faith administers or operates kingdom keys. But thirdly, very quickly, faith provides one way of administering one, one area of administering faith is that faith provides the favor of God. Tell your neighbor, you're carrying, fa you're carrying favor. Uh, tell the other neighbor who is looking more expectant, you're carrying favor. Hello. <laughs> but then, did you know you carry favor every day? You see, Pastor Ambrose is a favored man. 
when I greet you, favor just gets into your life. Hello? Yeah, because I carry favor. I believe that the favor I carry will change your life. Hallelujah. But guess what? You also have favor. Now there's this story in the book of First Kings. So let me read it, chapter 17. The story of Elijah. Around verse 4, the Bible says this. First Kings 17. He carried favor wherever he went. God was talking to him and it was a time of famine and all kinds of things. He says, you will drink from the brook and I will have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. Because he had said there's no rain. Just like Pastor Shira said. He said there's no rain. There was no rain for three and a half years. Verse 5. So he did what the Lord had told him. You see, faith comes by hearing what God has said. So he did what the Lord had told him. He went to Kerith, the Kerith Ravine, east of the Jordan, and stayed there. Verse 6. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Sometime later, the brook did what? Dried up. Because there had been no rain in the land. Verse 8. Then the word of the Lord came to him. I love that statement. Go back to that verse. Then the word of the Lord came to him. That means faith was born in his life. And the Bible says, what kind of word was this? Go back to verse 9. He says, go next week to Zarephath. Go where? At once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. Now let me stop there briefly. Who needed food? Between Elijah and the widow, who needed food? Let me read that verse. So let me read it again. Just go to verse, verse 9. Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to do what? So who needed food? Elijah or the widow? Elijah needed food. Did the woman need food? But there's something the woman didn't have that Elijah had. What did Elijah have? Huh? Favor. Are we together? Yes, he needed food himself. But more than food, he had favor. And I want to say to you in Jesus' name, you're walking around with favor. I'm saying you're walking around with favor. I'm saying you're walking around with kingdom favor. People who have favor sometimes are broke. You know, there are some of you who are sitting here, even though it is just the beginning of the month. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, sometimes looks deceive. Just tell them. You know, there are some people who get paid around the 26th. So by, by fast, they are now living by faith, not by money. They are now living the rest of the world. <laughs> but let me tell you this. You may be broke right now, but guess what? You are walking around with favor. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Elijah was so broke. No food, no water, but he was carrying favor. And God was telling him, I want you to dispense. I want you to operate. I want you to provide this favor. Somebody needs it. And that somebody, when favor connects, food will be supplied to you. So look at your neighbor briefly and tell them, don't just see me like this. I am favored. And I walk around with favor. 
Tell them, I knew you were ignoring me. <laughs> but now you can't. Tell them that. <laughs> Why can't they ignore you? You are walking with favor in Jesus' name. And by the way, by the way uh, even as I'm declaring this, favor is coming upon you. Amen. Favor is coming upon you. Amen. You may be broke, but you're carrying somebody's favor. Amen. Hallelujah. So he says, listen, if you sit here with this favor, not only are you going to die, the woman who needs that favor will also die. So wake up, go. I, 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 I thank God I'm a pastor who is favored. I'm saying I walk with favor. I may not have money in my pocket, but I have favor. Hallelujah. I have favor to make things happen in Jesus' name. And so do you. Let me give you an example. You know, favor comes from different directions. There's one time a house girl needed um, some documents. One of the things she didn't have was a birth certificate. So we looked for people to help us get birth certificates. We could not get. To connectors. You know, sometimes you look for connectors. Look at your neighbor and look at them. Do they look like connectors? So we searched and we were trying calling this one, calling that one, nothing is happening. Then I was talking about it as a by the way to one of our staff here. And he turns to me and says, why are you looking for a certificate? There's a guy called Muliro. You know, do you know a guy called Muliro? I said, I know Muliro. I said, you talk to him, you will get that birth certificate. In my mind, Muliro was the most unlikely person to get me a certificate. You know, you're looking for people with ties and nina and nina. So I go looking for Muliro. So I said, Muliro, I'm looking for birth certificate. Do you think you can do something? He said, ah, you leave that to me. I want, give me this information, this information, this information, this information. He was given all that information. He went. A week later, he came with a birth certificate. The Muliro I'm talking about is, is right here. <laughs> Muliro, the people upstairs have not seen you. Just come up here. Now, this does not give you an opportunity to start looking for a birth certificate. I'm just giving you an example that this gentleman, I don't know what he did, but he came back with a birth certificate for me. Your story, Lisha. This guy was walking around with favor. And I connected. The favor fell on me. And that story, Ili Peter. Thank you, sir. That's it. So, look at your neighbor one more time. You may be sitting next to favor. You have no idea. Your miracle is sitting next to you. In fact, you're looking at them and says, Miracle Gani. <laughs> Let me tell you this. You are the miracle. You are the favor walking around. Now, please, after the service, don't congregate yourself around Molero. I say, Bana, tell me, Bana, your certificate. And I get a certificate. What else do you do? Passports. Do you also do passports? <laughs> Tell your neighbor, Kenyans are good people. Let me finish that story. 
Verse 9, go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed the widow there to supply you with food. Next verse 10. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was gathering sticks. Now this widow did not know that God had already put a command on her. A widow was gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called and said, Hey, by the way, as you're going, bring me, please, a piece of bread. The woman stopped. And Elijah continued speaking, said, As surely as the Lord your God lives. Now, no, she's the one saying, As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread. Now, the way I'm reading it, you don't get the tone of the woman. Maybe she didn't say it the way I'm saying it. She says, what? Yani, you're asking for water, and then you're asking for bread. Yani, who do you think? <laughs> I am. That's why he said, as surely as the Lord lives. Uh, as surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread. Huh? Do, do I look like bread to you? He says, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jar. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and do what? And die. What she doesn't know is that favor is at her door. The next verse says this, verse 14, or verse 13. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. And I want to declare to you and say, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. And then, this guy was very selfish. He looked very selfish. He says, and then make something for yourself and your son. But you know, when favor starts talking to you, God is about to open a new door. Pastor Ambrose is opening a new door for you. I'm saying favor is coming to you in Jesus' name. The next verse says, For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, The jar of flour will not be used up, and the jug of oil will not dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. That was an amazing miracle. You know, some of you read this. Maybe let me read it. Let me say it to you from in, in today's language. Imagine somebody promising you and saying, you know, he finds you at the ATM. You've just gone in. And then you, get, you try to get the balance. So the balance comes out. It is 200 bob. Then the guy standing next to you says, by the way, give me 150. For surely I tell you, after today, every time you use this ATM, you will have everything you need for the next three and a half years. What would you do? You'd look for the security cameras. But the guy has just asked you for how much? 150, which means you're going to stay with what? 50 bob. But imagine you actually believe him. And you say, no problem. Ching, 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 ching. He gets the, the, the entire 100 and 200 bob, gives you 150, he stays with 50. And you tell him, put you back your ATM card in there. The guy goes, ching, 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 balance. A million Kenya shillings. You look at him and you say, Illuminati <laughs> has just arrived. <laughs> <laughs> That's a miracle that is too much. So tell your neighbor, God is coming away too much, oh. That's exactly how we would react. 
But guess what? This woman went back into that jar, into that flower, every day for three and a half years. Our God is able. May favor connect with you. May favor in that office connect with you. May favor in that opportunity connect with you. Yes, that tender, may favor follow that tender in the name of Jesus. That business opportunity, may favor connect it. You are walking around with favor. Hallelujah. Okay, let me summarize the last two. So we have faith applies the kingdom of God. Faith operates the keys of the kingdom. Faith provides the favor of the kingdom. Number four, faith delivers the wisdom of the kingdom. So you need wisdom. So let me give you this story. It's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting story, but it's about King Solomon. So let me read it for us. Uh, starting with around verse 10. Let me pick it from verse 10. It says, The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked this. What had Solomon asked? So go back to around verse 8. In verse 8, he says, your servant is here among the people you have chosen. A great people too numerous to count or number. So give your servant what? A discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern these, these great people of, of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, since you have asked for this and not for long life, or wealth, which we all need. I need long life, I need wealth. Since you have not asked for this, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, which is a very key human uh, <laughs> desire. Nor have you asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in doing what? Can you see that? Listen to what the Bible says next. I will do what you have asked. Amen? May God do what you have asked. I will give you what? <clears throat> A wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for. <clears throat> How would you like that? Both wealth and honor so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in obedience to me and keep my decrees and commands as David your father did, I will give you a long life. Then Solomon awoke and he realized it had been a dream. He returned to Jerusalem, stood before the ark of the Lord's covenant and sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then he gave a feast for all his court. Now, a situation shows up that needs wisdom. Now, two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. One of them said, Pardon me, my lord, this woman you are seeing here, and I live in the same house. And I had a baby while she was there with me. The third day after my child was born, this woman also had, had a baby. We were alone. There was no one in the house but the two of us. During the night, this woman's son died because she lay on him. Maybe she was just drunk and just she didn't know what to do. So she got up in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while I, I your servant, was asleep. She put him by her breast and put her dead son by my breast. The next morning, I got up to nurse my son and he was dead. But when I looked at him closely in the morning, mothers, you know, mothers, you know, because fathers are not observant, but mothers, they know. Uh, the next morning, I got to nurse my son, and he was dead. But when I looked at him closely in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't the son I had born. The other woman said, no, the living one is my son. The dead one is yours. But the first one insisted, no. The dead one is yours. The living one is mine. And so they argued before the king. The king said, this one says, my son is alive and your son is dead. 
Well, that one says, no, your son is dead and mine is alive. Then the king says, now this was wisdom. Tell your neighbor wisdom. I wish I was there that day. Then the king said, bring me a sword. So they brought a sword for the king. He then gave an order, cut the living child in two, since each one wants a piece. Cut the living child in two and give half to one and half to the other. The woman whose son was alive was deeply moved out of love for her son and said to the king, please, my lord, give her the living baby. Don't kill him. But the other said, Neither I nor you shall have him. Cut him in two. Ali Jiuza, tell your neighbor, she sold herself. Just that's, that's the word. She sold. The woman whose son was alive was deeply moved. Okay, go to the next verse, 27. Then the king gave his ruling. Give the living baby to the first woman. Do not kill him. She is his mother. Let me tell you this. There are situations in your life in the month of April that need this wisdom. When you don't know, is it this or is it that? When you need that wisdom, God is going to give it to you. I'm saying God is going to give it to you. By the way, do we face situations like this in life? Not about people cutting their babies. I mean, situations that are so it can either go this way or that way. Let me tell you this. God is giving you wisdom. I'm saying God is giving you wisdom. I'm saying God is giving you wisdom. Finally, faith that distributes. And faith that distributes, distributes the blessings of the kingdom. And I want to say this. We'll pick it up next Wednesday as we continue. God has given you the ability not only to be blessed, but to distribute blessings. Let me read these verses which you know very well, and then we shall pray. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. I want to read that entire passage so that you know the blessings that are available for you to dispense, for you to share with others. Not only should, will you be blessed, but you'll become a blessing. The Bible says, if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands, I give you today. The Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on the earth. All these blessings will come on you and they will accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city of Nairobi. You will be blessed in the city of Nairobi. I'm saying you will be blessed in the city and blessed in the countryside. It goes on to say, the fruit of your womb will be blessed. The crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks, they'll be blessed. Your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. Your bank accounts will be blessed. Even though right now they're in the red. I'm telling you, God is about to bless you. You'll be blessed when you come in and bless on you, go out. By the way, let me say this now. Just go back to that verse. Let's, let's take it literally. Go back to that verse. You'll be blessed when you come in. So when you guys came in, you have just been blessed. Now you're just about to be blessed when you go out. Somebody has just missed that. I'm saying when you came in, you have received a blessing. Now as you go out, May you be blessed. Amen. May you be blessed. Amen. In Jesus' name. Look at verse 7. Verse 7 says, The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven directions. The Lord will send a blessing on your bands and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land He's giving you. The Lord will establish you as His holy people. As he promised you on oath, if you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in obedience to him, then all the peoples on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will fear you. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity. In the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, the crops of your ground, and in the land he swore to your ancestors to give you. 
the Lord will open the heavens. The Lord will open the heavens. I'm saying the Lord will open the heavens. May the Lord open the heavens for you. The storehouse of his bounty. To send rain on your land in season. And to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. Now, of course, that verse, just go back so that I, we just do some disclaimers. That verse, go back. Uh, that verse, go back to verse. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. Some Christians say, you see, that verse says we should only lend. We should never borrow. Let me ask you, is it a sin to borrow? Let me ask again, is it a sin to borrow? Why? Because the guy who is lending, he's also lending to a guy who is? Say it. <laughs> yeah, the guy, you will be a lender, but the guy you are lending to is doing what? Is borrowing. But you see, God wants to turn the scales for you so that you'll have enough for yourself and more to give away. Uh, let me say to the guys on this side. God will give you enough for yourself and more to give away. Uh, let me say to these guys on this side. The Lord will give you enough and more to give away. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm saying God will give you enough and more to give away. Amen. The Lord will give you enough and more to give away. Amen. The... Take it in Jesus' name. The Lord will give you enough and more to give away. Amen. The Lord will give you enough and more to give away. Amen. The Lord will give you enough and more to give away. Amen. The Lord will give you enough and more to give away. The Lord will give you enough and more to give away. <laughs> Receive it. Nana Mebaki, the Lord will give you enough and more to give away. I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, this guy is here. So let me say it again. The Lord will give you enough and more to give away. Amen. Take it in Jesus' name. That's the blessing of the Lord. Okay? Then the last verse, 13, says this. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top. Never at the bottom. God has given you faith to distribute his blessings. Shall we stand? Now, you are standing next to blessed people. I'm saying you are standing next to blessed people. You are, you are the blessed person I'm talking about. Hallelujah. This month of April, let me ask you. How many of you do you want these five things to become real in your life? I am included. May your faith apply the keys of the kingdom. May your faith operate the keys of the kingdom. May your faith provide the favor of the kingdom. You are walking around favored. May your faith deliver the wisdom of God when you need it. May faith distribute the blessings of the kingdom. This month, may you walk above the situations of your life. May you walk on water. I'm saying may you walk on water. Some of you are saying, which water? May you walk above your situations. May your situation not drown you. May you not be overwhelmed because the master, the king of kings, lives inside you. You are blessed to become a blessing. Hallelujah. Administering faith is faith that applies, faith that operates, faith that provides, faith that delivers, Faith that distributes the kingdom of God.
Father, it is a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord. And tonight, like I was saying, somebody may have come here and they really don't have anything, but they have suddenly realized they are actually carrying favor. Elijah was walking with favor, waiting to give it to somebody who needed it. Tonight, as I'm praying, I am carrying favor. As I've shared the word of God, I'm releasing the favor in my life, into the life of my brothers and sisters who chose to come tonight. May your favor, because of my words, connect with them. I'm distributing your blessing to them now in the name of Jesus. I'm releasing your kingdom in their life. I'm saying, kingdom of God, come. Will of God be done in their lives as it is in heaven. I'm operating the keys of the kingdom, the authority of heaven. And I'm saying by the authority that I have in Jesus' name, may God open doors in your life. May God make a way where there is no way. Starting tonight, that which is lost, may you find it. That which was stolen, may it come back to you seven times. In the name of Jesus. Lord, by that authority, I cause your kingdom to begin to move on behalf of your people. I command that sickness to be healed in Jesus' name. That migraine headache to go and never come back in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, this is a great month where faith has become an administrator, releasing the purposes of God into people's lives. Lord, there's somebody here who needs wisdom, and so I'm releasing wisdom to you now in the name of Jesus. Just the way Solomon received wisdom, may you receive wisdom for your situation and for your circumstance. Dear Lord, may we represent you well. And just like you say that you're blessed when you come in, you're blessed when you go out. I want to declare those who came here tonight and those watching us online and watching this message later when it is recorded, may the blessings that accompanied this, this service and this message down, be downloaded in your life. Receive the blessings of Jehovah. Tonight as you go out, the Bible says, you're blessed when you come in, you're blessed when you go out. Lord, we may not know what is waiting for us out there in the night, but Lord, we are talking about going out into our homes, going out into our job places, going out into our environment. God, I declare, there are blessings waiting for us. The blessings waiting for us. And so we go out with our heads held high. We are royalty. We are sons and daughters of the living God. And yes, the enemy may have been chasing us. For some of us, the devil may be sitting on us. But right now, we are too hot for him to sit on us. We are too hot for the devil in Jesus' name. We are more than conquerors. We are inheritors of the promises of God. And so tonight I pray, if anyone came here feeling hopeless, they are going out feeling hopeful. If they came in blind to the situations of life, they are going out with a vision. If they came not knowing what to do, they are going out with a directive from the King of Kings. And the Lord of Lords. They may, have, they may have come in burdened. But they are going out with a burden lifter. Jesus Christ. The son of the living God. This month of April. We are capturing it for your kingdom. Every day of the month of April. We are taking it from the hands of the devil. We are bringing it into the hands of Jesus Christ. Because 
we have administering faith and we shall cause this faith to operate the way God wants it to operate. Lord, we shall have more than enough and even to give away. Eternal Father, I sense there has been atmospheric change. There's a spiritual shift in our atmosphere right now. And if you're out there and you're sensing that shift, I want you to begin to just tell God, I receive your blessing. I receive your favor. I receive your kingdom keys. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless you. Why don't you just take a moment and just tell the Lord thanks. Be grateful that he brought you into the month of April. It's not by accident you're in this month. This month is your month of the open door. Command those doors to open. Command those gates to open. Let the king of glory come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord God Almighty. He is the king of glory. Receive that breakthrough. You have been waiting upon the Lord for. Call it out from the unseen realm. Bring it into the seen realm. From the invisible into the visible. Father, we worship you. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. Joy is coming to you. Joy is coming to you. Peace is your portion. The love of God is wrapping up, wrapping itself around you. Strength from heaven is turning your weakness around. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. You have administering faith. Administer justice. Dispense justice. The righteousness of God is coming your way. You will receive that which is yours. You will receive that which is yours. In fact, you are receiving that which is yours. You are receiving the blessings of Jehovah. Take them. It is your portion. In Jesus' mighty name. If you believe that, you better give God a big hand. And tell him thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. One more time. Hallelujah, thine the glory. glad you came. Yes. Tell your neighbor there's a cup of tea. Amen. Thanks for coming. Come on, give God a big hand. Amen. 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 Now, next, next Wednesday, we'll be getting closer to Easter. Uh, next Wednesday, I believe, um, I'm just asking you, should we cut the cake next Wednesday? <laughs> Birthday cake next Wednesday. Amen? For which month? 
for the month of April. Amen. Now, look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you, yani you, you shall dwell in God's house, in God's favor, in God's goodness. And there's nothing the devil can do about it. You're blessed to be a blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Shalom. Enjoy a cup of tea and have a good night.